with this, it is time for us to move on to our first uh, panel discussion. We've got the Business Leaders uh, Roundtable, and uh, they're going to be talking about building brands that Bharat trusts businesses do not need to spend too much money acquiring new customers. All they need to do is a plan. So this session uh, shows how to optimize your marketing budget to increase uh, profit margins and make your brand that Bharat Trust. While we're getting the stage uh, ready for our panel discussion, I'm going to be taking the liberty of introducing to you all our panelists and our moderator. So please uh, do give them a huge round of applause once they join us on stage. Well, the session is going to be moderated by our moderator, Aftab Nakhvi, the group CEO of Gozoop, and we're going to be having our panel members uh, shortly joining us. First up, we're going to have Ashwinder R. Singh, CEO, Residential, Bharatiya Urban. We've got Mr. K.R. Nagaran, uh, Nagarajan, Chairman Ramraj Cotton, who's going to be also joined by his son, who's the CEO of Ramraj Cotton, Arun Ishwar. We've got Mr. Utsav Malotra, COO of Noise. We've got Mr. Rishi Sharma, VP uh, Bedinath, And we've got Mr. Jay Bhuva, the partner digital of Deloitte. So with this, uh, we're going to be shortly, once we have all our uh, chairs being uh, placed on the stage. But meanwhile, we hope you all are having a great time and uh, do keep uh, tweeting about the event. Do let the word go out. Of course, our, we'd love the share, shares of all these uh, learnings to reach as much of audience as possible beyond this room. So while we have uh, the stage getting ready, so just allow us a moment uh, while we get it ready to be on the stage. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thank you all once again for joining us. And uh, we're going to be once again announcing the moderator and our panelists. Our moderator being Aftab Nakhvi, the group CEO of Gozoop. We've got uh, our panelists, Mr. Ashwinder R. Singh, CEO, Residential, Bharatiya Urban. We've got Mr. K. R. Nagaranjan, Nagarajan, Chairman Ramraj Cotton, who's going to be also joined with his son, Arun Ishwar, CEO of Ramraj Cotton, who's going to be helping in the translating. We've got Mr. Utsav Malotra, COO of Noise. We've got Mr. Rishi Sharma, VP Bedinath, and we've got Mr. Jay Bhuva, the partner, Digital Deloitte. So with this, as we can see the stage shortly being ready, uh, we're going to be just uh, requesting one by one our panelists and our moderator to join us. So ladies and gentlemen, with a huge round of applause, first up, could we have our moderator, Aftab Nakhvi, Group CEO, Gozoop, to please join us. Thank you so much. We'd give you the liberty to choose a table for yourself, a chair, whichever you'd like. Being in the center, we've got seven of you, so I believe a center would work perfectly for you. So while we have, of course, our moderator, Aftab Nakhvi, Group CEO, Gozoop, I just uh, shortly request uh, Mr. Ashwinder R. Singh, CEO, Residential, Bharatiya Urban, to kindly join us. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause for Mr. Ashwinder R. Singh, CEO, Residential, Bharatiya Urban. As we've got our two dignitaries on the stage, I'm going to be taking the liberty of now calling upon Mr. K.R. Nagarajan, Chairman Ramraj Cotton, who's also going to be accompanied with his son, Arun Ishwar, CEO Ramraj Cotton. A huge, huge round of applause for both our gentlemen for joining us, the Chairman and the CEO of Ramraj Cotton. Thank you so much for your valuable time. With this, I'd now like to, along with your applause, ladies and gentlemen, call upon Mr. Utsav Malotra. He's, he's delayed a little. Okay, he's going to be joining us shortly. We're going to be now... Okay, perfect. Mr. Utsav Malotra, CEO of Noise, could we have a huge round of applause? And if I can just say, could we have some noise for him? <laughs> Yes, certain funds will keep coming, and I hope the brands appreciate on that. Well, with this, uh, we're going to be having Mr. Rishi Sharma, VP Bedinath, if you could have the honor of having him on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. And uh, I'd now like to take the honor of calling Mr. Jay Bhuva, partner digital Deloitte, to now join us. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause, please. So well, as our stage is set, uh, it is time for me to pass on the live baton to our moderator. It's going to be a tough task ahead of that to take forth with this uh, glorious panel of yours. Over to you. Great. Thank you very much. A very warm welcome to everyone present here. Mr. L.V. Christian just shared some very valuable insights as to how the contribution of SMBs to ADEX is increasing. 
what looked even more promising is the growth over the next four years. And for me personally, it was a contribution of digital and how that is growing as a percentage of the total addicts. It very interesting to know that, in fact, our country is the ninth fastest growing market for digital advertising spends in the world. And that is also growing extremely, extremely fast. You know, today, we'll deep dive a bit further. And with all the fantastic panelists that we have here, we're going to get deeper into figuring out strategies as to what they're using to acquire customers more effectively and efficiently in a connected world in Bharat. We'll also be asking them about questions as to how they're optimizing their marketing spends, how the skew has happened for them over the years, especially in the past 24 months. And most importantly, we'll be asking them as to how they're truly building a brand that Bharat loves. So with that, a very warm welcome to all the panelists here once again. Uh, before we deep dive into the questions, I think it's important to just mention that the past 24 months have been challenging for a lot of people. Uh, but while the challenges were there, there were also a lot of opportunities. And the brands that really took these opportunities are the ones which zoomed ahead and today possibly are becoming the pride of our nation. With that, let me get in Rishi into the conversation. Rishi, in the past 24 months, we have seen that uh, you know, consumers have become more and more mindful about their health and uh, you know, being more concerned about it. How has that really impacted Bedinath as a business and what have you done to navigate that? Uh, thank you, Aftab. That was a great question. So definitely the consumers have realized that their health and wellness is of utmost importance and they want to learn more about it, they want to read up more about it. It actually led us to have a complete digital transformation within the organization, whether it comes to the consumer-facing uh, side or whether it's the company-facing side. Consumer-facing side, especially our D2C website, which was primarily more of information giving, had to be really revamped to provide the right information that the consumers were looking for. They were looking for specific details on specific products, specific details on raw materials, specific details for specific ailments. We, as uh, an Ayurvedic house, had to provide that information to the consumers and ensure that the right information reaches them. At the same time, we also had to revamp a complete digital presence so that they could reach us in the right way, no matter where they start up from. So whether that's social media integration, whether that's SEO, whether it's uh, linking our website to our various other uh, channels. So ensuring that the consumer had a very easy journey to reach the right information that they were looking for and also to provide a seamless experience for them to actually purchase the products online. Because as we are aware, uh, during lockdown, during the past 24 months, e-com sales were actually bo uh, boosted a lot. And we want to ensure that the consumer was able to get those products in the right way, in the fastest way, and be able to buy the right product for themselves. Sure. So that complete digital transformation actually helped us provide the right guidance and the right products to our audience in the past 24 months. Okay, Rishi, I'm going to come back to the point you made about e-commerce and D2C. And I would be interested to know more about how you're leveraging D2C in Bharat. But I'll come to that in a moment. Let me take the same question to Mr. Nagarajan. Mr. Nagarajan, for your company, how did COVID impact? Okay, and how did you navigate that entire thing? Did you do anything differently? speak in Tamil and then you can translate. Yeah. Good afternoon to all. My name is Nagarajan, founder and chairman Ram Rajikatan. Our total business in traditional wear of dhoti. At the COVID time, we are manufacturing mask and supply to whole South India. Uh, Tamil is Please, sorry. COVID time, we have been able to get a lot of money. We have been to get a lot of money. We have been able to get a lot of money. We have been able to get a lot of money. We have been able to get a lot of money. We have 
எங்களுடைய ப்ராடக்ட் எல்லாத்துக்கும் தேவை இருக்குதுனால டிஜிட்டலில் நிறைய வாங்க ஆரம்பித்தாங்க எங்களுக்கு அதனால் பிஸ்னஸ் வந்து பெரிய அளவுக்கு பாதிப்பை ஏற்படுத்தலை அந்த கோவிட் டைமில் கூட வந்து நாங்கள் ஒரு டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபைவ் பர்சன்ட் அந்த அந்த ஆன்வியலில் வந்து டர்ன் ஓவர் அதிகம் தான் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் கோவிட்டில் பெரிய பாதிப்பு இல்லை வருஷம் முழுவதும் நாங்கள் சம்பளம் கொடுத்துருக்கோம் கன்னியும் பிஸ்னஸையும் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் பெரிய பாதிப்பு இது வரைக்கும் வரல குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் எவ்ரி ஒன் பேசிக்லி வாட் இஸ் சேயிங் இஸ் ஜூரிங் த கோவிட் டைம்ஸ் வி நெவர் டுக் அ பெசிமிஸ்டிக் வியூ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் திங் வாட் வி டிட் வாஸ் தட் வி டிசைடட் தட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு பே எவ்ரி படி த சேலரி அண்ட் வி டி நாட் ஹாவ் அ சிங்கிள் லே ஆஃப் ஸோ தட் வாஸ் அ வெரி பாசிட்டிவ் இன்டென்ட் தட் ஹீ ஹேட் ஹீ செட் தட் ஐம் நாட் கோயிங் டு டூ எனி ஆஃப் சச் டிசிஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ஹி ஆல்சோ சா கோவிட் இஸ் அன் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஹீ டென் சி தட் ஹி ஹேட் நியர்லி டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் ஸ்டோர்ஸ் all those stores were closed but he never again took it in a negative way what he did was he tried to build the e-commerce site mm. so within 2 months we saw our e-commerce site actually increase in volume by 100 times not by just a few percentages 100 times the volume grew and further what he did was he he had lot of stock of fabrics so he wanted to actually um, you know uh, utilize them and create masks and i don't know how many people from south india are here but in south india if you go to any temple in tirupati or anywhere you will only see ram raj mask it's such a dominant position in the market because <laughs> the main reason is his whole mantra was first positivity and affordability so those two things is what he showed to the consumers and automatically consumers embraced it and what he wanted to say was in that financial year the covid financial year also the business grew by 25% we never actually had any sales degrowth in that that year in spite of having four months our entire stores not operating lovely positivity and affordability great mantras for success uh, let me take this to utsav utsav past 24 months would have been very disruptive for your organization and how did you really navigate and made the best out of the situation so uh, noise for those uh, who may not know uh, is a smart wearables business and for us uh, covid had a very different impact uh, the last 24 months almost certainly assured that india woke up to monitoring health which was let's say 2 years ago a case of us educating the consumer today it was more a benefits approach so we migrated the the funnel dramatically where the consumers were willing to accept but more proactively come and ask for a product that existed uh for us i think it was a huge learning experience to adapt and i think uh, i don't think it was a disruptor i think it was really an opportunity for businesses to reorient themselves take a step back and not be caught in the rigmarole of the daily chores and the business as usual operations that we kind of surround ourselves with uh for us i think what was a revelation was that we managed to connect with our consumers a lot closely uh we engaged in weekly zoom call focus groups of sorts with our consumers to take insights and those insights translated into products that we'd never done before new use cases started emerging where consumers basically said you know what we are at home and now the battery life needed on a uh, an earbud is a lot higher because the work from home need uh, has has changed how we are using the product stuff like now that we are at home we need noise cancellation because you are surrounded by 20 other people and and therefore a solve is needed so when we actually did that i think not only were we serving a solution for the consumer i think the result was in how the sales translated uh noise today is not only india's number one smart watch brand and we've been so in the last seven quarters on the trot we are now in the basic smart watch category the number one brand in apac and number 3 globally and for a homegrown brand to put india on the global map during this period i think is no mean feat most importantly our business grew 240% we registered profits the employee fold grew by almost 
and we did all of this whilst remaining bootstrapped. So I think for us it was a blessing. Lovely, that's the way to go. Uh, Utsav, you mentioned a lot of things including how you're getting insights from your customers and I think that was a very interesting way to do it. Uh, but you also mentioned about work from home and it'll be interesting to understand how work from home has impacted the real estate industry. Right? So Ashwinder, how has COVID impacted and work from home becoming mainstream? Did that impact in any manner your potential customers? Uh, thank you, Aftab. Actually, uh, just to give uh, everyone a a brief introduction, Bharatiya City is uh, now India's largest integrated township with around 150 acres of development. <clears throat> Our concept always was that it is a city within a city and uh, at core design was an important aspect. So a lot of focus was there on design. We have now 6,000 families staying there. And somehow, you know, uh, we always felt that home is not just the four walls, but it is what inside those four walls and what is outside that four walls. And how do you design? How do you kind of design something which is 700 square feet but looks like 1,000 square feet? Because we've seen a lot of 1,500 square feet looking like 1,000 square feet. And as we say, roti kapda makan, this is a very sensitive subject. And uh, real estate went through the toughest phase in the last decade. However, uh, COVID had a, a brilliant Un uh, COVID was very unfortunate, but it had a br brilliant impact on the millennials because that was the, the segment which was always talking about the shared economy. And suddenly, uh, a home became a very important aspect of it because of work from home and the time that was being spent on home, spent in home, like in Mumbai, because uh, most of the people in the family were working, they would leave in the morning and come back in the evening. So a home was mostly to be spent during weekends and, and to sleep at night, but this completely changed. So uh, the sales in the last two years, overall in the residential sector, which is 85% of the total real estate in India, have been dramatically uh, high, very positive, the millennials, which is in the age group of 28 to 35, uh, are the biggest segment that have been buying. And that requirement of an extra space in the home became very important. That is why they wanted to move from a rental home uh, to your own home. So work from home uh, actually is now, they say, you know, it's like a hybrid because it will always have some uh, segment of the working economy working from home. and. Uh, uh, they are also talking about a third space now, which is neither the home nor the office, but somewhere in between. So that is also emerging. But COVID, uh, most of the developers reinvented themselves who were developers with a lot of uh, brand equity. Uh, it differentiated men from the boys. Uh, uh, most of the debt in the uh, real estate sector went away in the last two years. Uh, if you want to go and buy a ready-to-move-in apartment, say, for example, in Mumbai, you might not get it today. You might have to buy it on resale and not from the developer because there aren't any because everything is sold. Uh, the requirement of debt uh, from the banking world and the financial services world from developers has reduced drastically. So COVID has really turned around the real estate sector, which was going through the worst part uh, in the previous decade. So that's how it is. Great. Ashwin, it'll be very interesting to know later possibly how you mentioned about millennials. How did you go about attracting them? But I'll come to that in a moment. Let me get Jay into the conversation. Jay, you've been advising, working with multiple brands, clients. Uh, how have you helped them navigate uh, during COVID and post-COVID times? Great. I think at Deloitte, we have been fortunate enough to be part of many success stories over over um, over a long period of time. During COVID, when we, when we looked at most of our clients coming to us, most of the brands coming to us, um, the fundamental theme that tied the outcome of their success during COVID time was the why behind their brand. Communicating in newer channel, communicating with new product, services, packaging, um, and delivery, and even all things around your product, is all of which, when the ethos and why you exist, if that is consistently represented, 
because that's the soul of your business. Most companies spend time in getting Hello, better. Um, yeah, most companies got that right during COVID. The ones who could not fell behind. The ones who were able to utilize their messaging consistently across this, and it required a lot of foundational capabilities within the organization. And I, I think most brands which leapfrogged had some sort of digital capabilities in their organizations. Okay, Jail, uh, stay with you for a moment. Are there any marketing strategies that really stand out for you? Or possibly any platform which is not the usual platform that your clients use to reach out to Bharat and to really acquire customers? Would you like to share any example of that? Sure. We always say when you buy a platform, you can only achieve parity. But you have to differentiate yourself. That's where your uniqueness, your core competencies needs to come into the, come into the play. Um, there isn't a silver bullet. What we have seen many organizations do, um, and, and quite intelligently, they have been using the influencers who are not the famous ones, but who have the potential in a local market. And we saw the TAM report in the, in the early part of the presentation. Turning influencers into creators was one very strong theme for the SMB brands that we worked with and we observed. The second thing that stood out was spending time and energy in first party data, especially for the direct to consumer brands where third party cookies are systematically going away. It's a matter of time in, in two years time, you wouldn't have access to those. Imagine if you were to start only then and say, how do I create a virtuous cycle where better services are offered to my customer when in return I get the better profile of my customer. Um, having all of those strategies in place, you're not going to get it right first time. But, but having small initiatives and moving the needle is very, very important. Okay. So leveraging influencers as creators, also leveraging first party data, making better sense out of it. Great strategies. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay, would you like to, sorry, uh, Rishi, would you like to add something to it? Uh, and also tell us that when you leverage e-commerce to really connect with Bharat, what are the marketing strategies that you really deployed? And how did it really help? Sure, Avtab. So, uh, Bhairdnath has always been uh, more focused on their traditional uh, Ayurvedic medicines, which we always felt was more popular on the GT segment. And our focus on advertising had always been on GT, you know traditional print, media, radio. Digital was barely 5% of our advertising spends. But during COVID, we realized that there was an audience in, on the digital platforms as well, on the digital uh, stage, who were interested in Ayurvedic products, who were interested in knowing about these Ayurvedic products, reading about them. And they were more comfortable in ordering them, say, from Marketplace or from the direct website of the brand and who are not really interested in going out to a store, say to a chemist or a general store to buy that product. And they would always compare products before buying and see whether it actually fulfills their needs and their requirements. And Rishi, this was not in tier one, tier two cities. This was in, yes. this was in rural well. in Bharat, across India. Yeah? Exactly. So Delhi, Bombay aside, we also had to go down to tier three, tier four cities. And we saw that the same trend actually followed there, where okay. the consumer actually wanted knowledge he wanted information and then they would want to compare and buy the right brand, the right product for themselves, whether it fulfills their needs or not. So we realized that we had to also become the information provider mm -hmm. and the, per per the person who would actually help them make that decision to ensure that they get the right product and the right ingredients in that. So we really pushed our own D2C website mm -hmm. by giving them you know, a lot of the required information there. We also leveraged social media a lot. Because especially in, say, tier two, tier three towns, Facebook, YouTube, these are a lot more popular, especially with the younger audience. And they use it as a medium to, say, consume data or to sort of like, you know, browse through uh, videos or photos. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we used use a lot of video ads rather than display ads. Okay. And that actually like, you know, helped us grab a lot of sh uh, share of that audience, 
which helped us drive sales towards our website. And uh, during the first lockdown phase itself, we saw an 800% growth on our D2C website, which we had saw continue on for the next two years. And just by that organic sort of you know, uh, audience that we were gaining through our social media, we achieved that. And then we started off more on the inorganic front by playing, doing display ads and other advertising. So I guess for us, the key part was getting that organic audience initially, mm. who were genuinely looking for a product. And we were just there to, show, uh, to give the right product at the right time to them. And leveraging that, and then using that base to reach the audience who were also looking for a similar sort of product helped us drive that sales to like... Okay, so, so like lookalike audiences you would have used to leverage that as well. Exactly. So to, in addition to Jay's two points of influencer and first party data, I think two valuable points here from Rishi. One was in making sure that when someone is looking out for you, your digital hygiene is in place and you're discoverable, mapping the entire customer journey, and possibly video ads, which has really helped you. Great. Uh, Ashwinder, would you like to add something to that? Uh, you mentioned about millennials and attracting them. Uh, what are the kind of strategies that Bharatiya Urban has used? See, one of the things that worked beautifully well for us was that people wanted to you know, either walk to work, or they now want to walk to retail hospitality. So the second Leela Hotel has come up in Bharatiya City. We have the largest mall of Bengaluru, which is in North Bangalore. And all of this started playing very well for us. And suddenly we saw a spike, uh, not just by advertising our homes, but advertising what an integrated township offers you. So, you know, you could, we saw a lot of people on their calls while walking in our, uh, walking in the park or, or you know, just uh, uh, the family was having their picnic and the guy, you know, just on a distant was, was working. So the millennials, because, because the distance from work to home kind of blurred because you were working from home and uh, people wanted to, they were not really worried how much distance they have to travel. So they wanted to be in an integrated township, and that is where the millennials, which was the incremental segment that gave that uh, <clears throat> you know, positive blip to real estate, started looking out. And the way we reached out to them is because real estate is a B2B, 2C kind of uh, an industry. Uh, in India, you, you, know, you hardly have uh, clients buying a home directly because they have their own brokers, either institutional or neighborhood brokers. So our focus was more on training the, the, the channel partners, uh, giving them the USPs of what an integrated township offers, making them you know, just tell a story that how it is going to help the millennials if they kind of shifted to, 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 to an integrated township. And obviously, we had an advantage because we didn't have competition. And the channel partners then started selling quite a bit because the standalone uh, societies uh, weren't doing as well because the moment people had an option that they had a mall and they had a hotel and they had a great school and uh, suddenly from uh, 4,000 families in the last two years we are now 6,000 families. So we connected directly uh, through display ads and through video ads so that the end consumer also gets to know about Bharatiya City. But a lot of focus was on the B2B segment where we did a lot of marketing and, and, and to our surprise, something as basic as uh, uh, communication through WhatsApp did wonders for us because it was a very focused uh, segment that we wanted to train and educate and tell them sure. what are the benefits for an end consumer to stay in an integrated township vis-a-vis -vis in a standalone, you know, residential uh, society. Sure. Ashwinder, I've been reading a bit about Bharti Urban and what really stands out for me is design. Do you think that design played a role in also attracting millennials somewhere? You know, it's, it's, it's uh, something uh, we are very proud of. What happened, our uh, pitch to the architect was that, uh, our chairman's pitch to the architect was that a 680 square feet apartment should give a feel of an 800 square feet apartment. And there were architects across the globe working on it. Uh, because we kind of spoke to uh, and kind of uh, hired, you know, seven, eight architects just on the design aspect. And finally, what came out was that uh, we created a concept of bay windows. So the window got extended by a foot. And that, that design suddenly made a 650, 680 odd square feet apartment. Because in India, we have to understand affordability is key. 
you know, just to give you a perspective, Aftab, uh, the input prices in real estate have gone up by 40 to 50 percent, which is steel, cement, etc. Uh, this is the only country in the universe where the demand has gone up, the input prices have gone up, and supply is less because you can't create supply overnight, but the prices have not gone up. Because, because the segment or the buyer does not want to kind of, he, th there is no scope for the affordable uh, majority mid-segment to increase uh, his or her budget. So that is where the design element, so we created this uh, in Niku Homes, where we had uh, bay windows in every uh, bedroom, where people could spend time with their kids, read a book, uh, you know, watch a web series. And that has created a, a cascading positive impact on our design element. And we are now again working on design to see how can we keep on innovating hmm. and providing the best to the end consumer because now home has become a big necessity and this demand is going to be quite sustainable at least for the coming decade. Yeah, okay. Great, Rishi mentioned about customer journey. You added to it with design which plays a very important role in conversions. Uh, let me take it to Mr. Nagarajan. Mr. Nagarajan, I'm aware that you have substantial marketing budgets. In the past 12 months or so, and since you mentioned about e-commerce, has your marketing budget optimized maybe from print, radio, more towards digital, how have you gone about attracting customers? Uh, last two years, I have a advertisement budget for 100%. Hundred percent, I'm doing it. That's why we twenty percent. We're doing it. Uh, because business is how it is. We don't know. 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 We um, what he's saying is that um, the last two years after the onset of COVID, the uh, marketing budgets came down. Traditionally, what we were spending pre-COVID, we were only spending 20 to 25 percent. But that did not have any impact on sales because we were already an established brand. But one thing he failed to add, I'll just add on to it, is that there, in terms of the ad mix, we were traditionally, before COVID, we were mostly spending on traditional mediums, you know, print, uh, television, radio, there's the fourth medium in the south which is called wall painting, which is not discussed here. We were one of the pioneers in that. But post-COVID, we didn't make a shift in our strategy. We were more embracing digital because we noticed that most of the, our consumers post-2017 when Geo came on board, uh, many people were starting to have smartphones and most of our traditional customers were entering the digital space. And we also found the ROAs to be much better there. So we did increase our budgets in digital, but overall our marketing spent was reduced in the last two years compared to what we were doing before COVID. But our established uh, brand presence in the South helped us in retaining our market share. Okay, great. Utsav, what about you? How is the marketing mix looking like at Noise? Uh, so I'll keep it brief, but the fact is that I just want to add a dimension where for SMBs or the D2C startups, especially in our case when you're a bootstrap business, uh, you have to operate with frugality. Uh, marketing monies are always less. So you have to make the most of them. As a consequence, the focus on digital performance advertisement where ROI and ROS are the holy grail, so to say, end up being key. But I think one needs to constantly have an eye on who you are speaking to and the where and the what kind of emerge from that. You start choosing platforms, you start getting the messaging right if you have the right eye on who the consumer is. And if businesses can actually decode that and get a grip of it, I think there are more than enough platforms that do justice today. Okay. Mr. Nagarajan had mentioned about positivity and affordability as his mantra. So what is your mantra at noise? 
I think for us, optimization is the mantra where uh, for every dollar spent, unless there is a return attached, uh, we kind of blackball it. So uh, we are very, very conscious about the money that we spend. Uh, for us, the mantra truly lies in the lifetime value of the consumer and if we can get him back to be able to justify the cost of acquisition. And that's, that's been the success for us. Okay, great. LTV and optimization is with itself. Jay, what about you? If there was a one-line mantra, what is your one-line mantra? I would say, let your why decide your what. Let the why decide the what. Okay, Rishi, what about you? Check. So, we've always believed, listen to your consumer. You know, Bednath being a 100-year-old brand, we... Yeah, please do, go ahead. Hello? Yes, sorry. So we feel that it's uh, a part of our responsibility to listen to them and give them exactly what they need. And that has helped us in the last 100 years. Okay, listening to them. Ashwinder, what about you? Uh, see, we have always, uh, we want the consumer to move away from the square feet discussion of carpet versus super and look at a home uh, uh, in its complete entirety. And for us, design is at the core of everything. And uh, we want to deliver happiness, uh, which has uh, worked very well for us. Great. That's the communication we do. Lovely, lovely. Fantastic. Great insights. Uh, thank you very much. I'm just going to leave you with my one-line mantra, uh, which in fact is a line from Sanskrit, which says, Sarvam paravasam dukham. Sarvam atmavasam sukham. And possibly this is the best call to action to Atmanirbhar, which it simply means that if everything is in someone else's control, you'll be unhappy. And if things are in your control, you'll be happy, right? So with that, I'll just conclude this entire panel discussion and hope that we keep building brands which do not only uh, uh, build trust and loyalty in Bharat, but also take Bharat ahead. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for all our panelists. Thank you so much. And may I request uh, Mr. Novel Ahuja to kindly join us to give away the mementos to our panelists. So ladies and gentlemen, let the applause continue. They've given us their valuable time and their keen uh, knowledge and experience while sharing the anecdotes today. It's an incredible day. And once again, a big, big uh, thank you to all our panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, let the applause uh, continue. And with this, if we may request you all to just step a little ahead and if we can have a group photograph. Would you like to step a little ahead? Yes, so all of you can be in one frame, Mr. Ahuja. Yes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. What an incredible panel discussion this has turned out to be. And once again, a big thank you to all our panelists for their expertise. Thank you.